Just got your first EV and still worried about charging? Not sure the best charging network to use? Dave takes it on, looks at the charging networks available, what they offer, how to pay, how to use them, and gives a general overall review to help make your charging experience better. The first in our series is Tesla. While many motorists choose a Tesla because the Model Y is now the world's best-selling car ever, so safety in numbers, many choose Tesla specifically for their supercharger network. Also, many superchargers are now open to non-Tesla cars. I will cover Tesla owners first, but then add the differences if you do not own a Tesla. There are only a few, so what can you expect? First, getting there. The shock is the ease with which you can find the superchargers. No multiple apps, no charger maps on your mobile. The main 15 or 17 inch display is your map, sat nav and app all in one. If you want to charge, simply tap the screen anywhere, select the charger button with the lightning bolt on it, and a long list of chargers within range will appear. And a screen image will change to a map with all those chargers highlighted and numbered. For superchargers, it will show the distance and the chargers available, i.e. those not being used. Non-Tesla charger networks will also be displayed, but we're concentrating here on superchargers. Tap your selected one and it will be entered into SatNav, showing distance and estimated time of arrival. Alternatively, you can find charges on a road trip by just entering your destination into your navigation and the car will do it all for you. If you don't need a charger for your trip, it will show your destination with estimated time of arrival and state of charge on arrival. If you will need to charge en route, it will choose the best one or ones and set one of them as your first destination, with a distance, ETA, and length of time it recommends you charge for. Now, don't be surprised if that supercharger destination changes while you're driving. Tesla monitors all of its cars and superchargers, so if it decides that the supercharger you were heading for will be full by the time you get there, it may switch to a different charger that is likely to have chargers available to you on arrival. Also, don't be surprised if the preconditioner turns on, even in the summer. Your battery management system will automatically turn on the preconditioner if it's needed, so that you always arrive at the supercharger with the battery at exactly the correct temperature for the fastest charge possible. In the early days with a new car, I recommend you let the car decide for you. On arrival, the next surprise is the number of chargers. Tesla no longer installs less than eight chargers. Some have as many as 24. And all are V3s with 250 kilowatt charging rate. You will also appreciate that these only have one cable with a CCS2 plug on the end. All new models since 2019 have this socket, so there is never any confusion over which to use. Now for cars built before 2019, they have a different socket. And older superchargers using V2 chargers have two cables, one CCS and one Tesla proprietary Type 2. Always use the CCS if you can. But note, all Tesla cars of any age and socket type can always charge at older V2 chargers anywhere in the world. All cars since 2019 can charge at any supercharger anywhere in the world. Older cars pre-2019 can always charge at the new V3s but need an adapter. This adapter also allows you to use any non-Tesla charger with CCS2. Now, if you're enjoying this video, please subscribe and click the like button. It costs nothing, takes two seconds, but makes a huge difference to a new channel like this. You'll find chargers generally quite busy, but with a really rapid turnaround time. A Model 3 or Y, for example, can add 175 miles in just 15 minutes. Now you begin to appreciate the effort and technology that Tesla has put into the charging experience. Reverse into your bay you always reverse. There's normally a bump stop to prevent you from getting too close or hitting the charger. Remove the plug from the charger and press the button. Your charger port flap on your car will open and the lights will turn blue, meaning it's ready to communicate. Insert the plug and you'll hear a click. Then the lights turn green, indicating it's begun charging. It's that simple.
If you get a red light, it means there's a connection problem. Usually the plug not being pushed far enough in, but a constant red would indicate you have a problem with either your car or that specific charger. Move to a different charger and try again. Your smartphone Tesla app and the car's display will show you the charging power, the state of charge and the estimated time to reach the limit that you have set. For general use, charge to around 70% unless you have plenty of free time, as going above this limit really slows down. Your choice, but just like you never used to always fill your petrol tank to the absolute bit brim each and every time you put petrol in, so EVs do not need a full tank on every single charge. When you've reached your limit, simply press the button on the plug. It will start stop charging and after a few seconds will click loudly as it releases the plug lock and the lights will turn blue. Remove the plug, return it to the charger and close your port flap. All done. But remember to vacate the charger bay to allow others to charge. There is an overstay or idle fee of around a pound a minute if you finish charging but remain connected. Now the main difference for non-Tesla drivers are that your display may not show Tesla superchargers. If it doesn't, you will need to use the Tesla app on your smartphone to find them. Your car is unlikely to automatically precondition on the way there, and the plug-in procedure is different. You'll need the Tesla app on your phone. On arrival, open the Tesla app, select the charge your non-Tesla icon, and it will show your location, the price, and a link to joining as a member, which costs £10.99 a month, but offers large discounts. Your choice. Select the charger number and letter you have pulled into, 1A, 3B, etc. Then remove the plug from the charger. V3 chargers will simply plug straight into your CCS2 socket, but with older V2 chargers, you'll find that when you remove the plug, it already has an adapter attached. Plug it in. When you reach your charging limit, you may need to select something inside the car to release the plug and stop charging. When you do, return the plug to the charger and again vacate the bay. In all cases, you do not need an RFID or a contactless card or anything else. It will all operate automatically when you plug in and the cost of the charging session will be deducted automatically from your bank before you even leave the location. Enjoy your Tesla and check out some more other videos you might find interesting. I'm Dave.